Uh, greetings and welcome to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, an integrative holistic psychiatric facility located outside of Delmont, Pennsylvania. And here at Seclair, we treat people, not necessarily diagnoses. My name is Jim Eller. I'm a behavioral health therapist. Today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be... Hi, I'm Rebecca Baim. I'm a physician assistant student from St. Francis University. And on my right... Hi, I'm Ashley Weirich, and I'm a physician assistant student from the University of Mount Union. And for the followers of this podcast, every week what we try to do is throw something out there and hope that you can incorporate it into your life. We try to show you exactly how to do things rather than just tell you to jump rope because it's good for you. Right? Mm -hmm. So we were talking the, this morning about dealing with awkward situations, were we mm -hmm. not? Yes, we were. So everyone out there has been in awkward situations in their life where uh, you've been in a situation and you just didn't know what to do, you didn't know how to feel, you felt, you felt awkward, you felt like running away and leaving. So what we're going to talk about today is incorporating some of the basic concepts and skills of mindfulness in dealing with those situations. So we, uh, we had talked about uh, some different types of awkward situations. Could you tell one that you've been in? Well, one that I've been in recently is a going to a funeral home. That's, uh, that, that, can, that can be uncomfortable mm -hmm. when you're standing and you just don't know exactly what to say. Awkward. Yeah. Awkward. Well, but, uh, you've been in that situation before. What's your, what would yeah. your suggestion be, Becca? Yeah, well, it always seems that people just repeatedly say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for your loss, I'm sorry. And one thing that I found that has been a little more appropriate and comfortable is to say, I regret their passing and I have fond memories of them and then move on. Um, so that's worked for me in the past. Oh, great, great. So you're regretting their passing and, and you put a positive spin on this. You say, I, I have many fond memories. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. So that, that leaves that person with a little bit of hope, does it not? Yeah. The hope of the fond memories that that, that individual had and that, that you've had of them. Right. I think that, that that would be meaningful. So what's the situation that you've been in, Becca? Um, I've been in a lot of awkward situations, but one recently was when someone remembered my name and I couldn't remember theirs. Oh, boy. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think everyone has been in that situation before, perhaps more than once. Uh, perhaps you might have a remedy for that. Um, I suggest saying, excuse me, you have me at a disadvantage. I have misremembered your name. Could you please be so kind to help me? Mm. So you're acknowledging that you forgot their name. You're not making some type of small talk opening that you would remember. Right. Okay. So you've been in that situation, and you know that they know that you don't know their name, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so that's the idea. So the, the thing about mindfulness is that when we're paying attention on purpose is to, number one, tell the truth. Mm -hmm. So telling the truth, can you, can, you get, can you be wrong in telling the truth? No. Nope. Uh, does, does improving your memory tell the truth? Yes. Okay. So you have to tell a lie over and over again, do you not? How many times do you have to tell the truth? Once. Once. You only have to tell the truth once. That's it. Although sometimes the truth may be like chewing up glass and spitting it out. <laughs> uh, however, you only it improves your memory and you only have to tell the truth once. And when you're talking about mindfulness and paying attention on purpose, Becca, isn't, isn't being truthful the, the foundation, mm -hmm. the rock of any any type of recovery. Remember, we're all in recovery from something. Is to tell the truth, and you don't have to turn back on that. So, what's one of the next things about about mindfulness when you're paying attention on purpose? Is to be there, to be in that moment. Where, so, if I'm asking you where are you at, what would you say? Right here. And if I asked you what time it was? Right now. Yes, right now. So when you're with somebody and you're in more that awkward situation, you can be right there and be right now. Embrace that awkward situation and you could tell the person, I'm feeling awkward, I'm feeling nervous about this situation. Describe it accurately and tell, and tell the truth. So when we're mindful, we also have that pause before reaction, do we not? Mm -hmm. So how many times have you been in an awkward situation and you blurted something out that I said, oh my gosh. Many times. <laughs> so if we're a little bit mindful, actually, we can step back, have, have that brief buffer between thought and action. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is what mindfulness is about. It's about developing that brief buffer between thought and action. So you can come up with something, make a wise mind choice about what to say, rather than thinking with your emotional mind. 
Mm-hmm. So when we're confronted with something, we naturally go to our emotional mind, don't we? Mm-hmm. Yeah, when someone comes up to you in that type of situation. So our suggestion for today is to incorporate some mindfulness into your daily life in safe situations, in safe situations. And when you get into these awkward moments, you'll have, you'll have the practice, okay? You don't want to invent the parachute when you're falling off the cliff. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, so the idea about this is practice in safe situations, repetition, 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 over and over and over again, right? Okay, so at the end of every podcast, what we do is we uh, write a free prescription, one for hope. I'm writing a big prescription for hope, everyone out there today. Fruits, nuts, and vegetables, unplug your television, and perhaps take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we ask people to fish without bait, a lifetime without definitive expectations. And as always, we ask you to do a kindness for yourself and a kindness for another. Namaste.